this is unbelievable. Actually, I credit Drew with finding this. So Drew and I were talking about Diddy, and I'm like, you know, uh, I don't like his music. I don't like him very much. I don't like the whole persona. None of this really surprises me. Like, you know, just look at the, the lyrics and the songs and like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm just, uh But it's turning into a big deal. And given what I just heard that Drew played me on MSNBC, I think it actually could turn into a, a really big deal. And the more I think about it, this story is important for us to talk about because there are too many people in this country that get away with a lot, that get away with things they never should get away with, frankly, crimes. I, I think about, you know, Hunter somehow not paying millions of dollars in taxes, and I don't even think I have to say alleged on that, right, because he got the handout from the lawyer who helped him pay the tax bill. And I think about what happened with Jeffrey Epstein and the horror there. And this story kind of feels a little like that. Um, Diddy had really been, this is, I think the New York post pointing this out, a kind of untouchable for decades and decades, right? Like they couldn't, they couldn't go near him. And yet there were all these rumors out there and all this chatter about how he was really bad. I mean, by look at the lyrics in his songs, like, there, I mean, not that, not that somebody is their lyrics. They, they're careful about not making that kind of connection, but there was a lot of information out there and nobody did anything. And now all of a sudden the feds are showing up at the doorstep. Do we have that tape from the local Fox affiliate? Holmes, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. And on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are heavily armed and uh, they've been very tactful, would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this afternoon we actually watched them as they made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates and as soon as they got inside the home one of the things that first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there now they did take a couple people into custody we witnessed that now are they under arrest are they just being uh, asked about what they know that I can't answer but I can tell you there's three people right there that were taken into custody Custody were, were inside that home at the time of the raid. We did see. Okay, so it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And it, it's believed that there was illegal trafficking, sexual trafficking, possibly minors. Um, we're going to get a lot more information in the coming days. But it's important because it, it's necessary that people don't think that they can just get away with anything because they have a lot of money and they have a lot of connections. You call this one and that one. And it's something that was mentioned on a, a program, <laughs> dare I say MSNBC, um, but they actually covered this. And I thought in a fair way by bringing this guy on, uh, Torre, I think is his name. He's sort of a podcaster type. And he talked about a story that he hadn't mentioned before about a family member that had gone to work for Diddy because he knew Diddy, he called Diddy, he couldn't get my family member a job. And I'll, I'll let him explain it because it's kind of spooky it's a little surreal. And if there's truth there, it, it kind of speaks volumes. And it's, it's good news that the feds are busting this up. But it seems part of uh, part of this whole life, his whole journey has been this sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to 
succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. We go back to CCNY, which he, a, a, a party that he overpromoted, that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or, you know, died nice. after, like, you know, I mean, there was a lot of dis, a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up. Shine. At, uh, on and on. Um, and now this, this large, growing number of people who are alleging crazy stuff yes. about him. Yeah. And these are things that people in the industry have been hearing about. It's over giving time. R. Kelly to write. It's giving, it's, 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 it's disturbing. You know, I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay. I, this I, is interesting. I know this man well enough to call him and say, Hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, Hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And, uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I, and he said, yes. And they were, flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? And he wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh, and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like oh, this is this is God. how it goes. OK. Yeah. OK. So to hear that things went even further with potentially, allegedly many other people. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not I don't it, you know, we, we feel like we've seen this coming. Yeah. And so. If these things that have been alleged are true, this guy needs to go down and he needs to go down hard and all the people that were around him allowing for this, they need to go down too. So this is a big deal. It is my understanding that they now have him in custody. And I think a lot, a lot, ladies and gentlemen, is going to happen. So Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, <coughs> who has built quite a music empire. Um, really just creepy, creepy stuff. I, I see some of you guys mentioning that teenage Justin Bieber video resurfacing. I saw that where he talked about, you know, um, all the fun things or whatever they were going to do. Um, apparently, we're, 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 we're learning that some of these alleged victims have been coming forward. And as a result of that, um, th these victims are... are allegedly speaking very candidly with the feds right now. And so the, the hope or the thinking is that they're going to have enough here to really take the guy down. But what, what a disgusting, disgusting situation really. Um, but listen, people, just because you get a lot of money, just because you're really successful, that does not give you the right to do. I mean, I, I can't even, I don't even like talking about these things, but just awful, awful stuff. Let's try and remember, you know what? You only go this way once. Be a good person, enjoy it, keep your, lo keep your loved ones close and, and value them because really that's, um, that's all we've got.